welcome to Ideal Just News Review for the week. My name is Joy Dixon. The Nigerian Air Force has denied allegations that it paid 20 million naira to bandits operating in Jibia, Kassina State, in order to recover an anti-aircraft gun from the bandit terrorists. The Wall Street Journal had claimed NAF paid bandits the huge sum to reclaim the gun in order to prevent the terrorists from using it to attack President Mohamedou Buhari's plane. But in a statement on Sunday by Air Commodore Edward Cabwet, Director of NAF Public Relations and Information titled, NAF did not make any payment to bandits in exchange for weapons. NAF debunked the report. The Air Force stated that it had carried out attacks on the said forest, stressing that there was no need to negotiate with bandits when it is on the offensive. Former Deputy Senate President Senator Ike Ekweremadu has again advocated for the creation of state police in Nigeria. He argued that the central police system, which Nigeria is running within its federal system, has collapsed and is unable to handle the current security challenges in the country. According to him, this is why in recent times the military has been brought in to handle security situations that ordinarily should have been the responsibility of the police. Ikwere Madu, who spoke to newsmen on Sunday in Yola, the Adamo state capital, on the sidelines of a church Thanksgiving service he attended in Begaji area, said Nigeria needs to drop the unitary system of policing, which is no longer working, and embrace workable systems as other countries of the world are doing. He argued that it is wrong for Nigeria to be running a federal system of government and insists on a unitary system of policy. Nigerians envoy to Chad and the Lake Chad Basin region, Ambassador Babagana Kingibe, has stated that Nigerians' unity is negotiable. The former vice presidential candidate stated this while speaking at the Sun Newspaper's 2020 awards in Lagos on Saturday. According to the former ambassador to Cyprus, Greece and Pakistan, even the union between a husband and wife is negotiable. He however warned that even if the country is divided, no land will be taken from one place to another as everyone would be required to remain in the same place. President Mohamedou Buhari on Monday sent a tough warning to bandits stressing that they are living in the fool's paradise of invisibility, but reality will soon dawn on them harder than ever before. Reacting to the killing of over 30 people in Goronyo Market in Goronyo local government area of Sokoto State on Sunday, Buhari told the killer bandits that the clock of your ultimate destruction is tickling as you will no longer have a place to hide. He maintained that the days of the bandits are indeed numbered because the military capabilities of our forces are being boosted by the acquisition and deployment of advanced equipment. The president in a statement issued by his spokesman, Garba Shehu, said the bandits are currently under desperate pressures because of the intense and sustained air and ground operations against them in their hideouts by our security forces. A former vice presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Peter Obi, has denied receiving any invitation from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Obi, in a statement signed by his media aide, Barrister Valentine Obiyem, said he only heard about the invitation on different media platforms. The former Anambra governor also denied asking the EFCC to make their investigations public. The police station located in Ohiaoku, local government area of Ebony State, has been attacked by gunmen who released those detained at the station. According to Daily Trust, the incident happened in the early hours of Monday. The development was confirmed by the spokesman of the state police command, Loveth Oda. It was gathered that the gunmen during the attack on the police station burnt patrol vans found at the station. Security properties had been damaged in recent times over the call for secession by some people in the southeast. Benue State Governor Samuel Ochim has condemned the massacre of people during an attack in Goronyo Market in Goronyo local government area of Sokoto State by armed bandits. The governor, who described the Western security situation in Nigeria as unacceptable, called on the federal government to urgently address the situation. A term in a statement on Tuesday by his acting chief press secretary, Nathaniel Ikior, also sent condolence messages to the families of those affected, as well as to the people and government of Sokoto State. 
more than 43 persons were killed as bandits invaded the Goronyo market in Goronyo local government area of Sokoto State. The bandits stomped the weekly market, shooting sporadically and killing several persons in the process. It was gathered that some traders and buyers were killed, while many others were injured during the attack. According to Daily Trust, the bandits operated for several hours, unhindered by security agencies or vigilantes. Or Tom, in his reaction, called on the government to do more to ensure citizens and residents live in peace. Unknown gunmen have killed no fewer than five traditional rulers during an attack by gunmen at Nenasa community headquarters of Njaba local government area of Imo State. Sources disclosed to Channel's television that the traditional rulers from the area numbering over 20 were in a meeting at the local government headquarters in the community when gunmen invaded the place. It was gathered that the gunmen attacked the meeting shooting sporadically and killing at least five traditional rulers on the spot. Those who sustained heavy gunshot injuries have been rushed to a nearby hospital for treatment. The Kaduna State Governor Nassar El Rufai has called on the federal government led by President Mohamed Buhari to declare bandits as terrorists. The governor said this on Wednesday when he also noted that declaring them as terrorists would allow the military to deal with the bandits accordingly without contradicting international laws guiding such operations. El Rafai disclosed that he has been telling the federal government since 2017 to declare the marauding bandits as terrorists, has written several letters on the same issue, but his requests have not gotten any favorable response so far. The Cardinal State Governor made his mind known on the issue while receiving the State Security Incidents Report for the third quarter of 2021. The Lagos State Police Command has disclosed why its men fired tear gas at NSAS Memorial protesters at the Lekki Toll Gate on Wednesday. The police fired tear gas at the protesters who were holding a memorial car procession to mark the NSAS one year anniversary. But in an interview with reporters on Wednesday, the State Police Commissioner Hakim Odumoshu said the police fired tear gas at the protesters to avoid breakdown of law and order. Odumoshu said that the protesters were against the promise they earlier made that the procession would start by 8 a.m. and end by 10 a.m. The police commissioner stated that any demonstration that goes beyond the agreed time is constituting a nuisance and will not be tolerated. He added that the youth remaining are the miscreants, hoodlums that want to capitalize on that to attack innocent people and start robbing people. Zamfara State Deputy Governor Madi Aliyu Gosal has accused Governor Bello Matale of making him irrelevant. Gosal had refused to dump the People's Democratic Party PDP for the All Progressives Congress APC with his principal early this year. Speaking at an inspection of a new PDP secretariat in the state, Gosal accused the State House of Assembly for which hunting him. He, however, boasted that the PDP was very much ready to wrestle power from the APC in 2023. According to the Deputy Governor, he has assumed leadership of the opposition party since the defection of Matali to the APC. The leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, Namdi Kano, has pleaded not guilty during his rearrangement at the Federal High Court in Abuja on terrorism charges. The court section on Thursday commenced at 10 a.m. When the charges were read to him, the IPOB leader pleaded not guilty. Namdi Kanu's lawyers has also made a case for the IPOB leader to be transferred from the DSS custody to the correctional facility but their wish was not granted by the court. The case of the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, Mazi Namdikanu, has been adjourned to November 10, 2021. Justice Binta Nyako of the Federal High Court of Abuja had postponed the case to November 10. If I a job for Namdikanu's lead counsel had asked the court to transfer him from the custody of the DSS to Kuje prison. But Binta Nyako, the judge, refused the application. Namdikanu was driven away by the DSS from the courtroom and he will remain in their custody until the next hearing date. Up next is Post News. Please stay with us.
Relegation threatened English Premier League side Newcastle United have parted ways with manager Steve Bruce. Bruce's departure, which was long expected, was announced by the club in a statement on its website on Wednesday. Newcastle United can confirm that Steve Bruce has left his position as head coach by mutual concert. He leaves the Magpies after more than two years in charge, having stirred the club to 13th and 12th place finishes in the Premier League and reaching the quarter-final stage in both the Emirates FA Cup and Carabao Cup during his tenure. Newcastle United would like to place on record his gratitude to Steve for his contribution and wishes and wishes him well for the future, the statement said. Coming up shortly is entertainment news. Auditions for Credit to Fame Season 2, the Unlock Your Talent show, commenced on Friday, 15th October. However, the organizers of the show have released a statement saying that the audition is still ongoing and urges you to grab this as it is an opportunity to showcase their talent to the world. Thank you for watching. My name is Joy Dixon. To have a great day.